Shalom. This is Yair Davidi. Yair Davidi speaking to you from the land of Israel on behalf of Brit Am. We are now about to discuss, God willing, the blessings that were given to the lost ten tribes of Israel, to all the tribes of Israel, but especially the lost ten tribes of Israel as handed by the tribe of Joseph, and that these blessings are found in the Bible, and they prove that the lost ten tribes are to be found amongst Western peoples, especially the English-speaking peoples. This video talk is a quick overview a quick, very brief overview of the blessings is meant as an introduction to possibly to a whole series of talks on this subject in more depth. But already from what we're about to tell you, you can see that there's something in what we say. There's something important what we have to say. There's something important what we have to say. And it's worth your while and important to you to hear us. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were the forefathers of the Hebrew peoples. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Abraham was the first patriarch, and unto Abraham was promised that he would become a great nation, and, will, and in you will all the families of the earth be blessed. Genesis 12, 2 3. And I will make my covenant between you and you and multiply you exceedingly. Genesis 17, 2. The promised blessings began with Abraham, see Genesis 12, 2 to 3. Isaac, the son of Abraham, received the blessings given to Abraham, see Genesis 17, 19, Genesis 17, 21, Genesis 21, 2. Isaac, the son of Abraham, begat the sons Esau, Esau is also known as Esau and as Edom, Esau and Jacob. Jacob was later renamed Israel, Israel. The lineage of Israel begins with Jacob. Jacob was renamed Israel. Jacob received the blessings. See Genesis 27, 40. Genesis 28, 2 to 3. All the sons of Israel, that is Jacob, all the sons of Israel received the blessings. See Genesis 49, 28. Among the tribes, that is the sons of Jacob, Two of them, Judah and Joseph, were especially important. They had separate destinies, separate uh, tasks in history to perform. And the blessing, in some ways, was to be more apparent in Joseph. See 1 Chronicles 5, 1 to 2, it says, Judah prevailed above his brothers. Judah, Judah prevailed above his brothers. And of him comes the chief ruler, the birthright was that of Joseph. See, 1 Chronicles 5, 1 to 2. The birthright was that of Joseph. Joseph received a separate blessing even more strong than that of the other tribes. See, Genesis 49, 6. It says, The blessings of your father have prevailed upon the blessings of my progenitors, that is, my forefathers, unto the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. They shall be on the head of Joseph, and on the crown of him that was separated from his brethren. Joseph received a special blessing, more than the other brothers. And we have an indication that Joseph had an additional task of merit, in addition, alongside this extra blessing that he had received. In his own way, Joseph also represented all the rest of Israel, but there is something special about him. In scripture, scripture proves that the lost ten tribes, all the lost ten tribes, are now to be found among Western nations, among Western peoples. This includes the English-speaking peoples. The descendants of Joseph are especially noticeable amongst English-speaking nations. You will remember that the ten tribes were originally part of the twelve tribes. So twelve tribes of Israel, twelve, twelve sons of Jacob, the twelve sons of Israel became the twelve tribes of Israel. They came into the land of Israel, conquered the land of Israel. David established the capital in Jerusalem. Solomon, his son, built the temple in Jerusalem. The time of Jeroboam, the son of Solomon, ten of the twelve tribes separated, they seceded, and they set up their own kingdom to the north. And the Jeroboam, the son of Nabat, from the tribe of Ephraim. And this northern kingdom, for more than a century, remained separate from Judah. 
After that, it was conquered by the Assyrians, and all of its inhabitants were taken away into exile to different areas of the Assyrian Empire. And even before they were exiled, they had already become virtually pagans, virtual non israelites in many ways. And after they were exiled, this process continued, and they moved. Eventually they moved, they moved out of Assyria, they moved to the north, they moved to the west, they went by several pathways of migration, but in the end they all converged, they all converged on the same areas in Western Europe, and that is where they, they settled, and that is where their descendants are now to be found. History, we have historical proofs of this, and we also have biblical evidence and other evidence. The Bible says that the exiled Israelites including the descendants of Joseph, were to become one of the most numerous groups of people on earth. One of the most numerous groups of people on earth, the ten tribes. See Genesis 15, 5, 22, 17, 24, 60, 32, 12, Numbers 23, 10, Deuteronomy 1, 11, Isaiah 10, 22, Isaiah 24, 16, Isaiah 26, 15, Hosea 1, 10, they're also to be the most powerful nations on earth. See Genesis 27, 9, Numbers 24, 7, Micah 5, 7 to 9. They were to be the richest and to possess the most mineral and agricultural resources on, in all the earth. See Genesis 27, 28, 49, 25, Deuteronomy 33, 13, 16, or as they are to date. They were to live in the best places of the earth with the most salubrious climates, see Isaiah 41, 8 to 9. They were also to be in islands, see Isaiah 42, 4, Isaiah 49, 1 to 6, Jeremiah 31, 9 to 10, to be in peninsulas, to live on peninsulas, Jeremiah 31, 8, and at continental extremities, Deuteronomy 33, 13, Isaiah 24, 16, Isaiah 26, 15, Isaiah 41, 8 to 9, Isaiah 49, 6. They were to be seafarers. Isaiah 42, 6. They were to gain control over strategic points regarding their potential adversaries, the, the gates of the enemies, the gates of those who hate them. Strategic points connecting continents, connecting oceans, having vantage points over potential adversaries. See uh, Genesis 22, 16, set to 17, Genesis 24 to 60. They were to be like a lion and a unicorn. See Numbers 24, 8 to 9. A lion and a unicorn, these are the official symbols of Britain. And a bald-headed eagle, see Micah 1 to 16, an unofficial symbol of the USA. The Lost Ten Tribes were also to be largely unaware of the Israelite identity, to not know who they were, They're not to know that they were sent from Hebrews on the whole. They were to practice a non-Jewish religion, see Hosea 2 to 8, Hosea 2 to 13, Hosea 2 to 16, Hosea 11 to 12. Judah, that is the Jewish people on the end times, will not on the whole know who the Ten Tribes are, see Hosea 49:21. The scripture gives numerous identifying characteristics that, taken as a whole, can only fit the one group of people that will be found in Western Europe, especially in Britain, and the offshoots of this people in North America, Australia, New Zealand, and so on. And in addition to the biblical proofs, and we have many more like, the, like we have just said, the Jewish sages, Jewish sages and great rabbis throughout the ages have also provided us with much evidence confirming the identification of Western peoples, peoples including the British and the, the offshoots in the, the USA, of identifying them with the Lost Ten Tribes of Israel. An example of some of these proofs that we have spoken of at length elsewhere, some of these proofs include the uh, the opinion of Rashi, 1040 to 1105, commenting on the, on the biblical book of Abijah 120. Rashi says that the lost ten tribes went to Zarephath, a land called Zarephath, mentioned in the Bible, mentioned in 
the book of Abaj 120, and he says the lost ten tribes went there to this region called Serafat, and he says it means a land called France, that is France. Above in 1437 to 1508 says the by Zarafat, the term Zarafat in the Bible, 120 where the lost ten tribes went to, meant both France and England. In Nahumanides 1194 to 1270, he says that Zarafat means lands of the far north. And that is, he says, where the ten tribes went to. So they all say that the ten tribes went to those areas. The Hatim Sofa. He was a great rabbi who lived in 1762-1839. He said that in the end times, Britain and the areas of Western Europe will become part of Israel. Rabbi Manasseh ben Israel, 1604-1657, he identified the continent of America as a place where the lost ten tribes will return from. So we have Britain, we have Western Europe, and the continent of America as areas where the lost ten tribes will be. Rabbi Moshe David Valley, 1697-1776, he says to the tribe of Joseph, that is the ten tribes, were to become lost and assimilated in order to reform the Gentile peoples and to lift uplift to uplift humanity from within. Rabbi Samson Raphael Hirsch, eighteen oh eight to eighteen eighty eight, he said that the name of Manasseh, Manasseh in Hebrew, Manasseh was the son of Joseph. He says that this name Manasseh in effect connotes responsible representation. Responsible representation, which is a major principle of the American Constitution and American political existence. And this, along with numerous other proofs, strengthens our identification of the USA as dominated by Israelite tribes, especially the tribes of Joseph, and within Joseph, especially that of Manasseh. So, in addition to this, we have many more proofs, and we will bring them to you, and they're also available to you on the internet, on in our videos, in our articles, and we ask you to take cognizance, to read what we have written and hear what we have said. Take what, a message to heart because we believe it is important and it's worth hearing. May the Lord God of Israel bless you.